Well, uh, thanks for joining us as we start our new, brand new series on the book of Revelation. So this is our Revelation Bible study, chapter by chapter. I've got it there. Devil, not today, not ever. And that I've taken from a lovely gospel song that reminds us, devil, not today, not today. And, you know, when we unpack and we look at the book of Revelation, we find that it is a reminder from the Bible of Satan's defeat and our joyous triumph and victory. Now, you know, I've, uh, I've been a Christian since 1994. And, you know, in my early days of being a Christian, when it came to the book of Revelation, at that time, there were all these scary images and all of these scary sort of thoughts around the book of Revelation. And it became known as the scary book. And because it became known as the scary book, not many of us would want to read it. But then after being, you know, baptized in the Holy Spirit and being filled with the boldness of God, I began to realize that that was so far from the truth. Because Revelation, as we'll find out, is God revealing the victory plan. And God revealing that we are victorious, we are not defeated, and the devil is a loser in the literal sense of it. So I want you to, to be assured that even as we unpack and we go forward, that this is not about fear because God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And, and this is God's love letter. You know, it's the last book in the Bible and he gave the revelation to John as we're going to unpack his beloved disciple who was able to write what he saw. And revelation is that revealing, that uncovering, that unveiling of God's victory for you and I. So as we go through, you know, and looking at it like that, we need to understand that there's a reason why there's this veil, there's this fear and a bit of terror that is in, in enveloped this book of Revelation. You know, in my dealings as a minister and someone that was involved in, in exorcism and praying for people that were demon possessed, we've even had occasion to pray for and, and God used us to deliver people that were involved in, in things like Satanism. And when these ex-Satanists come out and they share their story, I mean, it's quite revealing. And what they tell you is that, you know, along with a certain list of regular prayers that these Satanists used to uh, render to their God Satan, one of those prayers was praying against Christians from reading the book of Revelation. Wow. So if you ever had that fear, that sense of, no, I don't want to read Revelation, it could be because you're playing into the hands of God's enemies. God's enemies that do not want you to know about the victory that we have and the victorious triumph of our God over the forces of evil. So I want to pray for you that even as we go through the series, that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you truths, simple truths, because God's word is simple. And this book of Revelation is written for believers, followers of Jesus Christ, so that we can understand it. And if at any time you feel as if it's too much for you to understand, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you, to speak to you, to give you the wisdom to understand what is written. So as we go through it, and we look at uh, verse, uh, the introduction, we realize that, you know, there's really not much of an introduction that we can give that has already not been provided. Because John, through the Holy Spirit, gives us an inspired introduction to this book in just the first three verses. So let's start there in the first three verses in the book of Revelation. Firstly, it tells us straight up, in verse 1, that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not John, not anybody else, but the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's important to know that there because the revelation is telling us of things that will soon take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant God. So this was a direct message, a direct revelation from God to John. And it is John who claims authorship of this book, but when he says that, who bore witness to the word of God 
and to the, the one uh, whose testimony is Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. So it is John reminding us that he bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. So as the angel revealed to John, as per Jesus's revelation, John wrote down. Now verse 3 is quite significant because it says, Blessed is he who reads and those who read the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Now that's amazing. So let's do a, a quick summary of what we've read there. Firstly, verse 1 tells us that it is the revelation. It is not just a revelation, but it is the revelation. And this is key to everything that follows. It is the revelation. It is the supreme revelation. And it is absolutely paramount for what we are about to uncover. Because here in the book, it reveals truths that have been concealed. Truths that have been hidden. Truths that may not have been at the forefront. But now Jesus is revealing through John in the book of Revelation what are things to come. And so we need to understand that firstly, that the book of Revelation is in great detail about Christ's return. And that's what you're going to find. You're going to find that Revelations is unveiling to us the triumph of Christ's return, the splendor and the glory. Now, interestingly, people may think that the book of Revelation is hard, it's difficult, it's like a puzzle, it covers things up, and you need to have a certain code and a key to unlock it. But that's not what was intended. The Greek word for Revelation is apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. And apocalypsis says it is the revealing. It is the revealing. And from that word, we get the word apocalypse. So literally, when we look at the word that in the Greek speaks about revelation, apocalypsis, we find that it is truth becoming clearly visible. It is literally to take the cover off. It is to unveil. It is to reveal. So to those people that think revelation is about hiding, covering, and it's a mystery and all of that, how does that fit in to what God's word is telling us? God's word is telling us that it is truth becoming visible. And that truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is becoming real to us. So we need to know that Revelation is not a puzzle. It is not a, a scary book or anything to scare us for those that are in Christ. But it is an uncovering. It is an uncovering of God's victory and the victory that we share with Jesus Christ to come. Now I mentioned about verse 3 because verse 3 tells us that you are blessed. To those who read this book, you are blessed. And what does that word blessed mean? In the Greek, it is makarios. And makarios means you are favored, you are fortunate, and you are happy. Why? From what you're going to read. You're going to know the victory. You're going to know the triumph. You're going to know that we're going to reign in power with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there's nothing to be scared of. Even as we live in the world today and we go through the tribulation and the trials and the persecution, we look to the victory and we hold on. You know, it's like this morning. I stayed up to watch my soccer team, Liverpool, play in the FA Cup final, but it went into extra time and it was getting too late. So just at the penalty shoot-off, I, I went to bed. I, I couldn't stay up. But in the morning, I looked at my phone and I go, wow, Liverpool won. And I rushed and I came to watch the highlights. Why? Because I had already known that they had won the FA Cup final. So I could look at the highlights with joy, knowing that, yes, we had won. So I could use that analogy to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is God communicating to us the future now. And revealing to us that we have the victory. We have the win. We have that glorious crown. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to walk around with anxiety or stress. Because we have the victory. And that is why I could get up this morning. And look at the highlights not being afraid. But had my team lost. I would have said. Ah, nah. I don't want to relive that agony. And that pain and that hurt. I, I don't want to do that. 
So you and I need to know that soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. There's no more dying there. There's no more crying there. He promised that he goes before us and he provides a mansion for us. And that's what revelation is. It's telling us that we are blessed, that we are favored, that we are fortunate, and that we are happy. It's revealing to us truths from the Old Testament prophets. And the prophecies that came forth are now being revealed and, and shown to us in this book of Revelation. Now, interestingly, in the 404 verses of Revelation, there is no direct quotations from the Old Testament. However, there's 275 verses that relate to the Old Testament. That's amazing. So God is unveiling that to us. Not directly quoting, but revealing to us that this is what it is. Revelations is an unveiling of the Old Testament. So what does it reveal? Let's get into that as our introduction to the book of Revelation. Firstly, it reveals to us there's warnings to the church about sin. So yes, the victory is there for us, but we've got to walk in a certain way. As we've been speaking about previously, that Noah walked with God, Enoch walked with God, and they reap the benefit of that obedience. So similarly, Jesus is giving us the victory plan, and he's warning us as well, uh, particularly the church, that we need to be wary of sin. And also, the need for holiness. Now, if you've been following our messages on Noah previously, my church knows very well, hello, the need for holiness. Hmm. Where has that been spoken of before? Yes. In our teachings on Noah, we spoke about holiness and even 1 Peter 1.16, where God says, I want you to be holy as I am holy. Because you can't have the power of Christ. You can't have God's favor. You can't have God's anointing if you're not living in holiness. And this is now what is required for us to enter into that victory. God needs us to live a life of holiness. And in Revelation, that's what's the message that's coming across. Holy, 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 said the four and twenty elders, casting down their crowns. And we find that the other thing that it's revealing to us is the power of Christ that is given to us over sin and Satan. That Satan is powerless. Christ has robbed him, has, has taken away all his power. And that's what we need to believe, that we have the power of Christ within us. And God, through Jesus Christ, has given us the victory over sin and all of that negativity. For us as believers, our triumph is in the glory of his worship. That we can worship him. And this is what you find in Revelation. You find the glory of being able to worship God. And that's what the four and twenty elders did. The angels were around the throne worshiping him to him who was and is and is to come. Holy, 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 holy. And this is where God wants us to worship him in the beauty of his holiness. The other thing that the book of Revelation reveals is the Antichrist and the battle of Armageddon. The battle that Jesus has won, it reveals to us. It shows you who the Antichrist is. And you know, I don't want to get into any debates about the Antichrist being this person and that person. But there's a spirit of the Antichrist. Anything that is against Christ, anything that is against the Bible, anything that is against truth, anything that is against light, that embodies the Antichrist spirit. And this is what we see here as well, that the book of Revelation speaks about the end of human history because it brings in the new heaven and the new earth that we are going to be reigning and living for eternity with our Lord and Savior. So this is not a scary book. This is not a book to make us afraid, but this is a book to highlight to us the victory of Christ over all the powers, human and demonic, that our God reigns supreme and hallelujah, it is the final end of Satan and his cohorts and of sin. Because in God's presence, where we're going to be for eternity, there's going to be no sin there. So this is really much us looking at it as back to the future. If you remember that movie from back in the days, the book of Revelations is taking us to the future and showing us the victory that we have. That similarly to us, that our team, Jesus, is on the winning side. We do not have to be afraid. And when we look at the central theme of Revelation, the central theme is the revelation of Jesus Christ unveiled. And we find that as we progress on in verses 4 and 6, it, it speaks about the revelation of Jesus Christ unveiled. Verses 4 and 6, and if we read there, it says, Who is, who was, and is to come. That is Jesus Christ. That there's an assurance of his second coming. 
the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth. He is supreme. There is no one that is above him. Our God is above everything. And he has washed us from our sins with his own blood. And wait for it, verse 6. He has made us kings and priests. Hallelujah. To his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. What a doxology that is. He has made us kings and priests. No longer do we need a priest to enter into God's presence. No longer do we need to feel inferior that we are not good enough. Because only royalty could get enter into the presence of royalty. As we saw in the story of, King, of Queen Esther. She was afraid to enter into the presence of King Xerxes if she was not summoned and all of that. But God has given us this. He has made us kings. He has made us priests. To his God and Father, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And when we look at it, we need to understand that in verses 7 to 8, it speaks about that he is coming in all his blazing glory. In all his blazing glory. And we can look forward to that, that this is what is coming. And looking ahead to the next weeks as we unpack the series on Revelations, chapter 2 and 3, you know, Jesus places a lot of scrutiny over his church because he's coming back for a spotless bride. And this is why the cleansing it has to begin in the house of God. The cleansing, removing all what is in the darkness, removing all, re removing all the filth has to come as he comes back for his bride that is spotless and clean. So as we progress on, we find that the rest of the chapters, chapter 4 to 22, really speaks more of the unveiling of Christ's glory and his victorious second coming and how he destroys Satan and establishes his kingdom. Oh, yes. That's the victory that is revealed in to come. You know, so we need not be afraid. We need not be scared. We can celebrate that. They know that, you know, as the Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke and John unveiled Christ in his humiliation on the cross and all of that. Revelation reveals his second coming in his exaltation. You know, we know that he came initially as the lamb to take away our sins. The sacrificial lamb all meek and mild to be slaughtered and to go through all the persecution that he went through. But now in Revelation, he's not coming back as a lamb anymore. The sacrifice is no longer there for the forgiveness of our sin. As Hebrews 10, 26 says, now he's coming back as the roaring lion of Judah, the all conquering king of kings and the Lord of lords. So you know what? Devil, not today, not ever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.